the night, hate crimes in San Antonio were up last year. We'll explain how the statistics in our area compare to other big cities around the country. Two city council members propose a gun buyback program in the hopes of curbing gun violence. Boeing San Antonio celebrating a Navy contract that's expected to bring hundreds of jobs to the Alamo City. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9, streaming from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. We begin tonight with a troubling statistic. Hate crimes in San Antonio have gone up by 50%. That's what a recent study from California State University shows from 2018. We wanted to know what that percentage really translates to and how SA compares to other cities. Sarah Acosta breaks that down and she also talks with a local rabbi about what it feels like to be a victim and what our community can do to lessen hate crimes in our city. Your heart sinks and it feels like a punch in the gut all at the same time because you think you're safe, you live your life. Rabbi Jeffrey Abraham knows what it feels like to be a victim of a hate crime. In 2015, his congregation, Aguda Sahim, was tagged with anti-Semitic graffiti. Then in 2018, a northwest side neighborhood was hit with graffiti targeting the LGBTQ community and the Jewish community again. A recent study from California State University shows that hate crimes in 2018 went up by 9% nationwide. And in San Antonio, it went up by 50%. But it's actually not as much as it seems. The study says that San Antonio had four hate crimes in 2017. Now that number went up to eight hate crimes in 2018. Now just take a look at how we compare to nine other large cities across the country. Comparing San Antonio to other cities similar in size like Philadelphia that had 43 hate crimes and San Diego that had 41 hate crimes, Rabbi Abraham says he believes San Antonio is on a good path, but it's still not enough. Whatever place we're living in, we should try to make it to the number is zero, right? That's the ultimate goal. A year and a half ago, Rabbi Abraham says San Antonio formed the Interfaith San Antonio Alliance as one way to combat hate crimes and educate the community about tolerance. And hopefully we can, you know, educate the next generation so that they are brought up not hating and instead learning to love one another and respect one another. And he believes we are moving in the right direction with the new state law, mandating a week of Holocaust, genocide, intolerance education in public schools. But Rabbi Abraham says public schools should take it a step further by adding an additional week of tolerance education. How to understand one another, whether it's sexuality issues, whether it's difference of religion, whether it's just difference of cultures, uh, just so that way we learn from each other. The study did not specifically go into detail what those eight hate crimes entailed. We did reach out to the San Antonio Police Department to ask them about the details of those eight hate crimes, but we never heard back from them. Myra. All right, thanks, Sarah. 38,000, that's the number of tips the FBI says it received from the public during the first full week of August. That's following the mass shootings in El Paso and Dayton, Ohio. The number is up from an average of 22,000 tips per week this year. More than two dozen people have been arrested this month over threats to commit mass shootings. The FBI is warning the public to remain vigilant and report any suspicious activity to law enforcement immediately. And after the shootings in El Paso and Dayton, two city council members are proposing a voluntary citywide gun buyback program to try to curb gun violence in San Antonio. District 2 Councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan and District 9 Councilman John Courage have teamed up on this proposal. They want the city to implement the gun buyback program for anyone who wants to sell their guns to the city. In turn, the city could help decrease the number of guns out there in the community. This is a voluntary program. But uh, I just feel if, if there's anything we can do as a city to get one weapon off the streets that might save the life of one person, then it's a very worthwhile investment. My thing would be to have these weapons melted down and then produce some form of sculpture that is actually a tribute to the lives that we've lost due to this senseless violence of guns. The next step will be for this proposal to go before the city's governance committee. Committee members will review the gun buyback idea before it could possibly go to the full city council for a vote later on. Meanwhile, District 8 Councilman Manny Palaez is continuing his three-part series of town halls on gun violence. The second town hall will be held at the Central Library downtown this Thursday. That's from 6 to 7.30 p.m. The discussion will focus on public readiness, de-escalation, and prevention strategies. 
Now let's turn to the nine at nine tonight. These are some of the most interesting stories making headlines around the world, around the country and right here at home as well. A judge says no deal to a man who pleaded guilty to raping women in the medical center. Three teenagers accused of stabbing a man during a home invasion and two giraffes recently died at the same zoo in Ohio. Here's tonight's nine at nine. A Bear County judge has rejected the plea deal for the accused medical center rapist. Anton Harris pleaded guilty to five counts of sexual assault last month as part of that deal. He would have been sentenced to 40 years in prison. But today, a judge rejected the plea, meaning Harris could be sent to trial. Harris is accused of terrorizing the medical center area over the course of two years, allegedly sexually assaulting five victims. In Maryland, seven people shot at a birthday party for a two-year-old. Police say this happened outside of an apartment complex where that party was taking place. All of those hurt were adults. So far, no word on any arrests. Here at home, three teens arrested after the Bear County Sheriff's Office says they stabbed a man during a home invasion. Despite running off, deputies were able to track down the two 17-year-olds and one 16-year-old by following footprints. The homeowner was taken to the hospital for some minor injuries. Deputies say the group may be tied to other recent home and car burglaries in that area. A $4 million jewelry heist takes place in New York City in broad daylight, and it was all caught on camera. Video shows the thieves pointing guns at several employees who are tied up on the floor. No one was seriously hurt. Police are still searching for those suspects tonight. Violence in Hong Kong escalating as protesters continue anti-government demonstrations that began 12 weeks ago. Yesterday evening, protesters used traffic cones and street railings to barricade streets and threw bricks, metal poles and petrol bombs at police. Officers used a water cannon to try to break down the barricade and one officer fired a shot into the air. The New Braunfels Independent School District is opening the doors to its new Gateway Transition Program to help young adults with disabilities get acclimated to life after graduation. The program is open to NBISD graduates ages 18 to 22. Students will be taught skills necessary to live and work independently. In three months, two giraffes have died at the Toledo Zoo in Ohio. An eight-year-old giraffe named Trevor was found dead in his exhibit just a day after he began acting abnormally. A necropsy will be performed on the animal. In June, a one-year-old giraffe also died at that same zoo. We don't know yet if these deaths are related. According to National Geographic, giraffes have an average lifespan of about 25 years in the wild. $75,000 worth of liquor destroyed after thieves used an excavator to break into a Detroit liquor store. Police say they took the equipment from a nearby construction site. They were able to get away with a few bottles. So far, no one has been arrested in this case. This man became the first person to paddle from California to Hawaii. The Spanish endurance athlete made the trip in 76 days. He took the trip on a 24 foot stand up paddleboard equipped with supplies, GPS navigation and solar panels for power. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. Here at home, a program to work on aging Navy fighter jets could bring hundreds of jobs to San Antonio. Boeing has been awarded a one year contract with an option for a second year to bring up to 23 F.A. 18 Super Hornets into the San Antonio site to help upgrade them and extend their life from 6,000 to 10,000 hours. But they're thinking even more long term than that. Boeing sites in San Antonio and St. Louis are preparing to help upgrade the entirety of the Navy fleet of F.A. 18s over the course of a decade. It's a huge deal for the San Antonio location and not just because of the additional work. But that's an F-18. You know, typically we work on large aircraft here, uh, commercial driven, executive transport, C-17, a large aircraft. So getting a chance to work on an F-18, a fighter, is an exciting prospect for all of us. The Boeing San Antonio side leader confirms completing the program would require hiring about 500 more people. And we'll be back in just a minute.
Well, our Texas heat wave is continuing. Unfortunately, it has just been so hot, not only today, but for the entire month of August. This month has been above average just about every day. So if you've been thinking, wow, it's been hot, you haven't been the only one. It has been hot for us here in San Antonio. Anywhere you see this orange, that's a day where the high was above average. We've only had one day in August where the high has been below average. And in fact, we usually average a high temperature in August right around 97. Our average high for 2019 this month has been about 99 and a half degrees. So yeah, it's been hot and it's been dry too. We've really started to see drought conditions uh, start to creep back into South Central Texas. We've now got severe drought just to the west of San Antonio and Hondo, Uvalde, even some extreme drought down near Carrizo Springs. Here in San Antonio, we're abnormally dry. No drought conditions in Bear County yet, but I think it's coming because we really aren't going to be seeing much of any rain over the the next several days. It's not only us in San Antonio that are struggling with drought. Drought conditions extend all the way up to Lubbock, up to Dallas and down to Corpus Christi. So a good portion of the state could really use rain. But this time two years ago, we were talking about too much rain. This uh, time marks about two years since Hurricane Harvey. On the 26th of April, two years ago, Harvey was really just starting to dump a lot of water. And by about the end of five days, by August 30th, over 40 plus inches of rain had fallen over the Houston area. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, we really only got about two inches of rain and out toward Del Rio, nothing from Hurricane Harvey. But it's crazy to think that that was two years ago uh, to this day. Now, in the forecast tonight, it's going to be quiet. Temperatures are going to fall into the 80s. It'll be mostly clear, warm and humid. The one exception will be it'll be breezy. South southeast winds at about 10 to 20 miles per hour. And like I said, unfortunately, tomorrow it's just going to be another day where temperatures are going to climb to 100 degrees. Heat index is going to be high, feeling like 105 to 110. That is, of course, after some morning clouds. So not only are we going to be seeing a dry forecast tomorrow, but it does look like the forecast should stay dry for the next several days, at least for the majority of us. And here's the reason why the heat high is directly over West Texas right now. That's why temperatures were up to 109 degrees out in Del Rio, 113 out in Midland Odessa because of that heat high. And that's going to dominate our forecast for the next few days. Now here in Texas, uh, there are going to be some showers and storms along a front in North North Texas on Tuesday and again on Wednesday. So there is a small hope on Wednesday that if those showers and storms hang on from North Texas, we could get a couple of isolated showers in San Antonio. Again, that is going to be on Wednesday. So if you are planning on taking your car to the car wash, I would actually give it the yellow light because it's going to be risky because there's going to be a chance for isolated showers and storms on Wednesday. Now, most of us again will miss out on the rain, but the chance for isolated showers is there on Wednesday. So as we look at the next seven days, just be prepared for the heat. OK, temperatures are going to be close to 100 just about every day. And other than that small chance for an isolated shower or storm on Wednesday, our Texas heat wave continues. Myra. If you're watching this digital show, chances are you have an Internet provider. Maybe you also still have cable. Both of them services a lot of us want, but hate the hassle of figuring out the best price. So when it comes to getting a cable and Internet package, how do you get the best bang for your buck? In this week's adulting hack, RJ Mark has stopped by UTSA to get some advice on how to lower your cable and Internet rates. Bundling packages are popular, but Dr. Mark Loon with UTSA's College of Business tells us there could be some pitfalls. Usually they have a very good deal when you combine them together. But when you expire the package, the expiration date, then you will be subject to a very hefty uh, raise in the price. Expiring discounts can be negotiated if you have the right bargaining chips like a large account. If you decide to cancel or change services, there is something else you have to think about. The exit barrier. If you want to cancel your service or what, if you want to change your phone carrier, then you will have to pay maybe $400 to break a fee. What about customer loyalty? You would think it would be a good thing, but that's not always the case. Sometimes threatening to leave a service provider can mean a good deal for you. It's not only switching my phone line, but I will also switch my internet and cable. 
and they may say, okay, we will give you a special discount. You also have to worry about the fine prints in the contract. Another tip for saving money, check for new providers in the area. They may have what's called a penetration pricing strategy. They may substantially lower the price just to get more customers. They may not even think about the profitability. Dr. Lung says it's best to keep your options open and understand it's a give and take. Keep in mind, if you want to get the good price on this, sometimes you may have to sacrifice some other one. So my advice is you always look for the what's called the net consumer gain. Okay, I may not have a super bargain on one piece, but all together, it is good for me. So let's do it. Adulting Hacks, just one of the series that we feature exclusively here on the News at 9. Here's a look at some of the others we have. Be sure to tune in tomorrow for an all-new installment in our consumer series, Money It's Personal. We'll be right back. Several changes are on the horizon for Texas thanks to the last legislative session. From tobacco sales restrictions to lemonade stand regulations. Here are a few of some of the most interesting laws that go into effect on September 1st that you should know about. A self-defense bill will make it legal to carry certain self-defense items. Thanks to House Bill 446, you'll soon be able to carry brass knuckles, clubs, and wildcat keychains. Good news for fans of the outdoors. If you forget your paper license at home when you go hunting or fishing, you'll no longer have to worry. House Bill 547 will let you show proof of your license license on your phone via the Texas Parks and Wildlife website. You'll also be allowed to show a picture of the license as proof. Another new law will outlaw minors from buying popular cough medicine. Under House Bill 1518, minors under 18 will no longer be able to buy medicine containing a cough suppressant found in more than 100 over-the-counter drugs. This includes cough medicines like NyQuil and Robitussin. About 3% of teens in the 12th grade reported taking large amounts of cough medicine to get high. That's according to a 2017 national study. Texas is now one of 18 states with a law restricting access to cough suppressants. Texas is also raising the age for tobacco sales statewide. Senate Bill 21 makes the legal age to buy tobacco products 21 with the exception of young military members. Of course, San Antonio already has a minimum age of 21 for tobacco sales in the city thanks to the Tobacco 21 Ordinance. Did you know your child's lemonade stand could apparently be shut down for breaking the law and it's actually happened in the past, but it will soon be a thing of the past. Children under the age of 18 will be allowed to sell non-alcoholic beverages on private property without fear of prosecution under House Bill 234. Beginning September 1st, beer and wine retailers will be able to make deliveries directly to your door. Enjoy responsibly. To read more about some of the other Texas laws set to go in effect on September 1st, go to ksat.com and click on this story. For The Nine, RJ Marcus.
<laughs> Let's turn now to some of the biggest stories making headlines around America. A ruling issued in a landmark case. An Oklahoma judge has found Johnson & Johnson and its subsidiaries helped fuel the state's opioid drug crisis. That judge has ordered the company pays $572 million to address the problem. Johnson & Johnson says it will appeal. This verdict comes after a seven-week trial. It was the first state trial attempting to hold a pharmaceutical company accountable for one of the worst health epidemics in modern history. Dozens of other states are suing opioid drug makers. 19 states are challenging the Trump administration's effort to change an agreement that limits how long migrant children can be kept in detention. California leading that lawsuit. This comes after the Department of Homeland Security unveiled the new rule last week, which will replace the so-called Flores Agreement. The Flores Agreement set a 20-day limit for holding children. This is the first legal challenge to that proposal. If you care about politics and public policy in the state of Texas, this is an event you don't want to miss. The Texas Tribune Festival kicks off in exactly a month in Austin. Today, the Tribune announced Congressman Will Hurd will be the event's opening keynote speaker. Hurd represents Texas 23rd Congressional District. That's an area between San Antonio and El Paso along the U.S.-Mexico border. But he recently announced that he will not seek re-election. We spoke with the Tribune CEO and co-founder Evan Smith about what we can expect from this conversation and why heard was a good choice for the opening night. Many of the big issues that are defining the political conversation right now, race, uh, guns, the border, Russia, and the whole cyber portfolio, these are all issues that uh, Representative Heard knows extremely well. Heard is not the only big speaker making an appearance at the festival. We learned last week that House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will be at the be the closing keynote speaker. Rather, over the course of the three day festival, there will be more than 400 thought leaders in politics and public policy and more than 100 different panels. It will be a deep dive into the big issues and the big political conversations that define this state now and define it going forward. And if you are a political junkie or a policy wonk, this is like Woodstock without the drugs for you. You still have a chance to register. KSAT is an official media sponsor for this event, so you can use the code KSAT19 to get $50 off the registration price. Let's go to KSAT.com right now to find out what's trending tonight with RJ Marcus. All right, Myra, let's start first with uh, back to school. I think for the most part, all districts 
are officially back today. Northside, I know, was the big one, but uh, also Southwest students uh, returned to school today, and uh, they got some pretty nice surprises when they got back to class. All right. Yes. Like what? Southwest High School did a whole new facelift and renovation on their uh, career in tech area. So now they have a full new Cosmo Center, a lot of health and science, new things that they have there. And from looking at this story from Tiffany and uh, Jason Foster, man, these kids are really getting some nice stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool to come back to school. Everything looks new and high tech. That'd yeah, awesome. yeah, and um, a lot more here, details on what they have here at Southwest High School. It's good to see that these students are getting these opportunities, like you said, to kind of uh, use this equipment and basically kind of expand their horizons. A yeah, bit. absolutely. Yeah. Cool stuff. Check it so. out on our website. Absolutely. All right. Um, next story here. I don't know about this headline, but you know what? Yes, fall is right around the corner, even though you cannot feel yeah, it. Yeah, it in no way feels like no. it. It seems like it. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't even sound like it, but okay. You may not feel it, but maybe you can at least taste it soon. Uh, Bluebell has released its new fall flavors, and uh, there's some pretty interesting ones here. Salted caramel cookie ice cream. Okay. Okay. That to me sounds good. That caught your attention? I like salted yeah. caramel anything. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Happy Tracks, which is a vanilla ice cream with chocolate coated peanut butter cups. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. A lot so, going on. Um, okay. So yeah, these are going to be showing up on store shelves. No pretty pumpkin soon. something or other. No pumpkin something or other. You yeah. Know, I but... kind of applaud Bluebell for that. Like there's <laughs> enough of that already, which yeah. debuted apparently like two months ago. Yes. PSL. Let's get it out of here. Well, at least Bluebell is. <laughs> even got a little. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, we can go on a whole pumpkin spice uh, rant. Yeah. If yeah. <laughs> okay. But we won't. Um, we don't have we that won't. kind of time. There you go. Uh, Bluebell, you can check out this story on our website. Okay, some uh, big news for Disney fans and Star Wars fans. Uh, Disney, the D23 Expo was held over the weekend, and there were a lot of cool stuff that was announced. First of all, Star Wars Land. They introduced, or they basically showed, like, the hotel now that's being built okay. for it. Fully immersive experience, Star Wars Land. It's like you're in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, totally <laughs> People stole that are going to eat this yeah. up. They're going to love it. Um, they're apparently doing a big old um, overhaul at Epcot, too. A uh, new Moana area. Moana. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of like a living, I think it's like the River of Life or something like that. Uh, Mary Poppins is going to be there. And Marvel now is going to be in uh, California Adventure in LA. Of course. LA. Yeah. That makes sense, right? It, right. Hollywood. Cool. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> makes a ton of sense. Um, so a lot of cool stuff going on. Plus, they also kind of gave you some more details on their Disney Plus streaming which is going to be ah, huge. Yeah, yeah I'd like to know a little bit more about that. Yeah that's going to be a huge deal all sorts of Disney property there and I think they're going to bundle it with ESPN plus and Hulu too. Ah, so, okay. Yeah that's going to be really kind of a big game changer there so uh, if you want full information on all this stuff. Yeah to our there website. is a lot of info in this yes, article. There is. <laughs> okay cool thanks RJ. Thank you Mara. We'll be right back. It certainly pays to pursue a career in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's according to a new analysis of U.S. Census data, which shows that the most valuable college majors are those in STEM. Naval architecture and marine engineering top the list of more than 160 careers considered for this ranking. Second to that was nuclear engineering. Both of those career fields boast an average income of more than $90,000. But money wasn't all that mattered for this ranking. In fact, the study also considered unemployment rates. Right now on KSAT.com, you can see a list of the most and least valuable college majors according to this analysis.
That is all our time tonight here on KSAT News at 9. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Myra Arthur. We'll see you right back here tomorrow. Good night.